do we know? What are the indications and how do we know whether repentance is accepted? What are the indications? The indication as far as uh, repentance to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, is that you do not commit the same sin again and your good deeds keep on increasing and your bad deeds keep on decreasing. This is number one thing, that Allah has accepted your repentance. Number two, that you have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three is that you regret to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you keep on asking his forgiveness. Number four is that you're humble and you always address him in humility. So these are the four signs which show that your repentance has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The signs of non-acceptance of the Tawbah repentance is deficiency in the person's repentance and he remembers the pleasures of the sins and he gets preoccupied in continuing the sin. That's number one. Number two, he's so sure that his repentance will be accepted as though he has got immunity and he's immune to it and surely he'll be forgiven. That's number two. Number three is that his eyes don't cry and his heart is hardened. Number four, there's no increase in the good activities that he's doing. No increase in the good deeds. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number four, in the book of repentance, hadith number 6621, that if the people do not commit any sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe them out and replace with the people who commit sin and who ask for forgiveness so that Allah can forgive them. Now here, if you understand this hadith, it will look very odd that does Allah want us to do sin? If you don't do sin, Allah will remove you. What it means that there are some people who may do sin and who may ask for forgiveness and repent and may come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the good deeds will increase. And these people will go to Jannah. On the other hand, some people who do good deed and they have a conceit. They're so proud of themselves and that will take them to the hellfire. So Allah says that if there's a group of people who don't do sin, Allah will replace them with the people who do sin so that they will ask for forgiveness and Allah will forgive them. That means you should have humility. So these are the signs for not acceptance of your tawbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to accept repentance and our tawbah, Dr. Zakir. There is another question which I have, which is just to end this particular session, this particular show, and that is, is there any limitation to the sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept our tawbah for? As far as Allah's forgiveness is concerned and His mercy is concerned, every surah, every chapter of the glorious Quran, it begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Every surah except for chapter number nine, Surah Tawbah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Zumar, chapter number 39, verse number 53, that, O my servants who have transgressed against their souls, despair not the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah can forgive all sins. Allah is of forgiving and most merciful. Here Allah says that whatever your sin may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can forgive any of your sins as long as you repent. If you repent the right way and if you ask forgiveness, Allah will inshallah forgive you. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, it's mentioned in Sahih Hadith of Ibn Majah, Hadith number 4251, the beloved Prophet said that every son of Adam, he commits sin. And the best is the person who repents. If you commit sin, no problem. But if you repent, then you're the best person. Repentance is very important. It's mentioned Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3540, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that Allah says, O son of Adam, you may do any sin, and I will forgive all your sins, even if your sins reach to the clouds in the sky, I will forgive them. You ask me for mercy, and I will forgive you. It's for the mission hadith of Sai Muslim, hadith number 6246, where the beloved Prophet said that Allah says, even if you do sin day and night and ask for forgiveness, I will forgive you. You ask me for pardon, and I will forgive you. It's mentioned in Sai Bukhari, form number eight, hadith number 5999, there were some prisoners of war who were released, mainly children and women. And one lady, she searches for a son, and she cannot find a son. The moment she sees any child, 
she breastfeeds the child. Then another child she sees, she breastfeeds the child. Finally, she finds her own child. So the Prophet asked the Sahabas that when this woman finds her son, even if he has done a sin, then will she throw the son in the fire? They said, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servants, even if they commit sin, more than the lady loves the child. So based on this, we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive any of your sin as long as you repent. And just a last quotation, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 48, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleases, he can forgive any sin. But the sin of shirk, he'll never forgive. Here it means that if a person does shirk and repents before he dies, before the death rattle, inshallah Allah will forgive even the sin of shirk. If he repents and comes to the straight path and believes in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believes in Tawheed, Allah will even forgive him his sin of shirk, which is the biggest sin. But if he dies as a mushrik, after he dies, Allah says here that he will not forgive the sin of shirk. Any other sin, if he wishes, he may forgive, but the sin of shirk, he'll never forgive. Shirk is the biggest sin. So from here we come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and is willing to forgive the sins of his servants.